we're on easy street And it feels so sweet Cause the world is but a treat When you're on easy street Welcome to the Easy Street Radio Show Hosted by Rob Scribner Grab a cup of coffee and let's get started Our videos are made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags Available at Amazon right now Hello guys, this is Ranger Rob, and I'd like to have a serious talk with you guys about some of the things coming up in the future. Now, I don't want this to seem like a gloom and doom, and I don't want this to seem like uh, that I'm trying to scare anybody. But if for those of you, I know there's so many people that are living nine to five, making ends meet, taking care of the kids, doing the night, you know, the jobs and commuting and trying to have a car that runs and be watch part of the news and uh, you get bits and pieces of what's going on. But um, I really wish I could produce a video that could really bring people into the light of, of common sense things that could happen. And in anything I talk about here is if you take action, None of it will hurt you. It will only help you. Um, and look at almost everything I talk about as an investment. And so I'm not going to be just talking about money. I'm not going to be just talking about prepping and things like that. But but to invest in yourself. Because the world is definitely changing. Now, a lot of you guys are like, We've all grown up to say, hey, stock market's kind of our indicator of things and stuff, but not this time. In fact, the best thing we could do is ignore it because there's a whole different game going on up there. And it's one that you and I are not playing in. <laughs> Someone else is. And things are totally overvalued. The thing we need to watch is uh, currency and Obviously, jobs, unemployment, things like that. And what we, a lot of people don't pay attention to that stuff. And also, what's really money? Money is not really money. It's a debt. It's paper. And it's only as valuable, valuable as the set standards are on it, which is changing. They're trying to well, they're not trying to, they're trying to hold it, but it's going down. The value of our money is going down. And inflation, although you may not really see it, $20 five years ago does not go as far as it does today. Even within a year, $20 is less and less value. So the thing is, is one of these things are going to break is either housing market or uh, the stocks and the game that's being played because we're not producing. Companies need to be producing things and making services and stuff. And yet these stocks that are Tesla and all these big companies, if are they making and doing enough to actually be the value of their stocks? The answer is no. They're overvalued. There's a game going on. Eventually, somewhere along the line, People are going to say, is your company actually worth what you're producing or what your service is? And pretty soon people are going to go, uh, no, they're not. Bail, sell, get out of there. Um, the value of our dollar is going to go down, which means inflation. And deflation is going on too in, in a bad way. For example, I'll use something very simple like McDonald's. Let's say they change things to $15 an hour or whatever. And so we got it, people working in these places for $15 an hour. And they can't produce a hamburger without raising the price. So they have two choices. Find a way to be more, uh, to save money producing what they do, or uh, they raise the prices. And both are going to occur. But the way they can save money is less people. So if you have a nose like McDonald's, they've got those walk walk up to uh, kiosks where you can order ahead of time and stuff. What they're slowly doing is creating a business that doesn't need people. 
it's getting an, uh, automated or robotic. Uh, pretty soon, burgers will just be flipped and turned and all that, and everything will be automated because people cost too much money. And if they don't replace the people, the price of a hamburger and milkshakes and stuff will go up. And that's gonna that's where we see deflation. Um, people people being replaced is basically deflation. Where are you seeing that? You see it in all your electronics. Technology causes deflation, but at the cost of people. Inflation is when our dollar is not valuable enough to buy the same things it did a year ago, five years ago, whatever. We all know that, hopefully. So what I'm trying to do is get you more aware of what's going on is there want our system is breaking down. Our debt-based capitalism system is going breaking down. You may be starting to hear about digital currency or, or uh, crypto and things like that. And yet they just haven't found a way to, to get us on board. And then there's that talk of uh, reset or worldwide kind of recognized uh, currency. And no matter what, let's just look at, look at this, no matter what, if they go that direction, we're going to be in a world of hurt during the transition. And housing can be very scary. If anybody can remember 2008, uh, I had the same thing happen. I bought a house in 2007. And in less than a year and a half, the value of that house went down. I paid $350,000 for that house. And within a year, year and a half, it went down by $176,000. I don't want to tell you a whole story on that whole thing, but the same thing's going to happen again. History always replaced, replays itself. It just may play out differently. Where well, you saying, well, like the Great Depression, Rob, it was, we saw the stocks go up. Well, not this time because things are different. We've still got the same things going on. Unemployment, super high, jobs, inflation, all that stuff is hitting those marks just not the stock market. Why? It's because they're trying. The best way to say is every every market needs to have recessions. It always has cycles. And what they're doing this time is trying to prevent it or keeping something that naturally happens to get us on a level playing field again is being denied. So that's what you see in the stock market. So ignore it. Ignore the stock market. Pay attention to how far is your money going? How many people do you know are out of work? How many people are out of work because of COVID? How many people are uh, don't have health insurance? How, how many people can't pay their mortgage? And, and that's what you need to pay attention to, us 90% of people, all of us. So the, the thing is, what I'm trying to get you to pay attention to is, Instead of being depressed, I'm not trying to get you depressed. I'm trying to get you excited and ready to go. And uh, in some places that you live, some of you guys had a chance to test what I'm talking about, like Texas and Oklahoma and a lot of the states that had the cold front go through. Some of you guys were prepped up. Some of you had some extra equipment. Some of you had propane uh, Coleman stoves. And let's talk about food. Um, food is going to get tougher and tougher. Um, and by the way, there is a talk. There may be a universal income sometime because uh, we are a consumer driven economy. And if we're not consuming things, we're going to be in trouble. So the best way to do that is how do you get money into people that don't have jobs? Well, a universal kind of thing may come, may happen. As crazy as that sounds right now, some of us old folks are going, no way. That's communism or socialism. Um, it may not actually uh, be called that, but it's going to be a step towards it because without money in, in our people, in our hands, us 90 percenters, there's no consuming going on without consuming the economy doesn't function right. So eventually they're going to go, how can we get people consuming again when they're all unemployed and there's no jobs? Well, we got to get money in their hands somehow. And that may be the result. And that could happen sooner than you think. 
So to move on even farther, food is going to be probably the first thing that's going to be terrible. And uh, during all the stuff we're talking about, Unfortunately, a lot of people are going to suffer and probably lose more people than, and it's too bad. It shouldn't be that way. But um, some of these things that we take for granted, and that's really what I'm talking about. We take a lot of things for granted and we got to get out of that mode. We need to get excited and prepared. I'm not saying doing something crazy and I'm not saying buying machine guns or anything like that. I'm talking about prepared and be ready for a transition and not be so overwhelmed. I mean, how many people did we see interviewed in, uh, in uh, Texas? I'm cold, I can't heat my house. I'm living in my car. I can't boil water. And it's like, that's ridiculous. Especially for 150 bucks, you could buy a really nice Coleman stove, a, uh, a case of uh, propane, the little green canisters and uh, uh, a Mr. Um, Heater Buddy, uh, I think, I don't know. I've got two of them. Anyway, that can be used indoors. You could have gotten through that. But you're so, cons you know, you're so consumed in life right now. And you thought your region couldn't have problems like that. And what I'm saying is, even though like, I'm in Oregon, and it's not likely that something's going to happen like that. And then if I don't have something prepared and something happened, I'm an idiot because I could have simply a little bit each month done something to prevent my family from being in trouble and, and being cold or hungry. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to prevent you from being cold and hungry or losing your, uh, your house or your shelter or losing your income that's in the bank or is in a, 401ks and stuff. And I can't go into all that, but there is certain things you need to know about money. Money is just a big, um, America tells us basically what our money is valued at and what is, and, and, and our consumer confidence is also what supports it. That's going to change, but there's certain things that are always be consistent like gold and silver, it's being suppressed right now. And, and it's kind of good because you you could buy it. It's kind of getting scarce now, but you can buy it. And pretty reasonable, I think you can still buy silver. It's valued around $28 right at this particular time. And, of course, with the markups on it, um, you're paying between $35 to $38 an ounce. But if things break loose, it's going to go nuts. And uh, that's an asset. That's real money. Another thing that's an asset, in a sense, is going to be food and shelter and, and things you can barter with. Because when this transition happens, things are going to be tough. And going to the grocery store is, is going to be really hard. Your money won't go very far. And there's going to be scarcities and stuff like that. Uh, and several things will drive that. Either we've seen that our distribution system is broken. We, it could happen again. We also know that we've had weather problems, et cetera. We could really have problems with food and it doesn't have to be that way. Starting now, right this minute, you can start preventing you from being that person on the news going, I couldn't heat water. We have no food. I'm sitting in line for two hours to get a hamburger because we can't cook at home. That is ridiculous. We need to be accountable. We need to be more prepared. And so this is a happy period. This is an exciting period because then you're being challenged. I'm challenging you that if we went through hardship, you would be okay. My power went out and I had to function here electronically. I had a generator backup system to run this whole system that I'm on right now. I had to do a show and my power was out. It's like I am not being stopped because... Every month, and my lighting's kind of funny here, so sorry about that. Every month, um, I've done something positive to be prepared. So so what if I have a generator? Yes, it costs me money. Is it a good investment? 
It will be if there's an emergency, but did it hurt me much? Ah, even for the little times of powering out and stuff, I've had it. So now we had that fun. Let's talk about food. I'm going to tell you some of the things that I've done. Doesn't mean you have to do it, but this, I don't want to be a person that's preaching. I practice what I preach. I and share my wife, we've been pre learn, preserving food. We've learned how to do some canning. We've been buying food that has long shelf life, and we could easily go six months to a year and survive. Um, getting to that year would be a little harder, but we're going to be certainly changing that soon by bringing in a freeze dryer. Was that a lot of money? Yeah. I'm not telling you you have to do that. But maybe you have a friend that's got one. You can start working together. And that's where I will talk about communities. You need to find like-minded people that are trying to use common sense. And I don't want to use the word prepper, but be more prepared for things that could happen. And so what? How? how is this any different than insurance? You buy insurance for your car, for your house, your boat, whatever you got, motorcycles. Why? You think something's going to happen? Well, hopefully not. But why do you do it? Because you're being preventative from being hurt financially or health support or being liable for someone else's damages. We have insurance for that. That's what this is all about in this conversation. And I know it's long and know it's long, but please, I'm telling you, stick with me and, and leave your comments and tell me what you're thinking. Is this foolish? Are you, are, am I getting through to anybody that, that hasn't started getting prepared for little things? I don't care if you're in an apartment, uh, a little teeny house a large house, a trailer, an RV, whatever, you can be more prepared. And you look at the basics of like, what am I, uh, what could hurt me the worst if something happened? Water, food, finance? Is your, what if I can't get to my money in the bank? Do I have anything to fall back on? You could go to garage sale, start buying up people's old silver and stuff. Sometimes they're just giving away for dollars. And uh, it's scrap silver, but it's great silver, sterling silver. If you see someone selling a set of sterling silver stuff um, and uh, they just want to get rid of it and they're selling for five bucks for the whole thing, buy it because scrap silver is going to have some value. Um, but, uh, you know, what if you can't get to your money? What if your 401k is not accessible? What if your stocks that you've gotten have crashed or whatever? Uh, are you going to be, can you survive? Are you diversified enough? And and uh, the other thing this person brought up was uh, uh, when you say diversified, we're not talking about stocks, diversified in physical assets. Can, if you, money wasn't available right now and stuff, do you have things of value that are barterable? And I'm not just silver and gold. We're talking about food and skills and things like that. Um, do you know how to can? Do you know how to vacuum seal? Do you know how to use a food saver? Um, maybe you gotta start learning. And if you need a place to get lessons, go to YouTube. Super simple. Every, I've learned so many new things this year. My head's ready to explode and YouTube's been my savior. Um, water. Can you get water? Can you... Maybe you're in an apartment that has a swimming pool. Or if you had a Berkey, you go grab a bucket of water out of that pool, take it over to your Berkey, and you got perfectly good drinking water. Um, it all depends on your scenario. How, where am I most uh, susceptible to pain? <laughs> water, is that it? Then what can you do about water? What can you do about food? How can you preserve more food? Dried food is great. Um, can you make your own dried food? That's what we're doing. So what are we doing over here? We buy, we have a um, freeze dryer coming and we are getting into hydroponics and we actually have a whole new gardening system starting here in a new region. And if you look at older videos I have, you'll see that I was able to grow all kinds of food in Arizona 
and uh, in a very small lot. And uh, I had a swimming pool, so I had a big water reserve right there as long as I had my Berkey. So uh, that's the first thing is food. Um, is there a way that you can preserve some food? Can you grow your own food? And no matter where you're at, they've got vertical uh, ways of growing certain foods um, that you could do on your apartment um, patio. Um, like I said, it's different for everybody. Even in an RV, we kept a one-week emergency supply of dried food in there. Um, and so obviously you have to... Uh, you, keep, you may not be able to do what me and Sherry are doing, and we and we moved here intentionally in a country, so we could start growing food in a higher scale to support us and basically our families that we need to help support and trade with the community that may need food and stuff. I'm sure my neighbors are doing things over there that would be valuable to me. At the same time, they'd probably love to have some of my uh, uh, vegetables or eggs or something I have growing over here. So uh, uh, bartering may be just part of the new world along with the new reset of money coming that we're not used to bartering, but it could be important as we go into the transition of the new reset, they call it. And so you, you laugh at it now, but why not be a little prepared for it, if not a lot? What is wrong with that? What is so funny or uncomfortable about someone who preps? There's nothing. And whenever emergency we've had here has come up, we've been prepared for it. And I'm still not totally where I want to be. But I have to go at one step at a time based on our budget and our time in a time of year. So I'm pleased. Am I reaching anybody? Am I reaching anybody to think about being a little bit more on the uh, proactive side of not being burned? Nobody's doing this on purpose. The guy, I'm not blaming the, the Democrats or Republicans or a president. Uh, it's just how it is. The economy goes into cycles. However, this one's being manipulated, and if it crashes or changes, it's going to really hurt, and people are going to lose their lives. People are going to starve. People are going to freeze. People are going to lose their houses. They're going to be homeless. Try not to be one of those people. And that's by starting today to do a few things to help keep you from being any more uncomfortable than you should be. Shelter. What are you doing for shelter? Do you, maybe you have a van. Maybe you have an RV. Maybe you have property. Maybe you could work a little harder paying off your mortgage. Maybe you could uh, uh, go on a co-op with somebody with a property or something. What could you do to ensure that you had future in, if we get in a financial crunch? That is a high priority. Have you even thought about that? Or are you just living for the now? Do you remember what all those people that were living for the now sounded like in Texas that were calling in saying, I don't know how to heat up water and boil it? That's ridiculous. I mean, you could go to Walmart and buy cute little heat warm. Uh, stove and you can use something very simple and, and safe like propane canisters. There is no reason for an answer like that. This could never happen to me attitude is just not going to cut it. Or if people are not going to bail you out. You need to be accountable for yourself. And that's all I'm trying to do is change your mindset of, am I really expecting others to help me? And when things get tough, just like some of you guys don't like nationalism, a lot of people just will be worrying about their families and surviving. Uh, yes, they'll be interested in community stuff, but if you don't have anything to offer, they're not going to help you. And it's really sad to think like, you know, people will do that, but it's reality. And you, so many people I feel like aren't facing reality and are not being proactive. I want you to get excited about, hey, I can handle emergencies. And that's what this video is all about. So the other things I want to make sure is we talked about finance, health, start taking better care of yourself, eating better, having supplements at the house, 
things like that on hand all the time um, to help keep you out of the hospitals. And I have obviously first aid, uh, first aid kits and the kits for a little more uh, worse kind of uh, injuries. I'm not using the right word for that. Um, in case you have an emergency, uh, we may not have doctors available. Look at with COVID and all that stuff, half the offices are closed. In an emergency, those doctors want to be home with their family and police officers and fire departments. They, we saw that in Katrina, they went home to take care of their own families. So don't think people are going to be there to help you. You got to be more self-reliant. So please, I'm begging you, try it. Start doing things and, and start writing down, like, what are the things that are most important to me right now? Food is always number one. Shelter, warmth, um, things like that. Health. And last but not all, is start working with community. Find like-minded people that are doing the same thing. And then as a community, maybe you're good at growing food where another person's good at engineering and building things and stuff. Barter, work together, find common interest. And when times get tough, you'll be there for one another. So I hope that was a good talk for you guys. I want all of you to be safe, be proactive, get excited. Change is on the way and change isn't always all bad but it can be very uncomfortable. And just because of small things like not having food preserved, not having water treatment available and getting burned for that, you're gonna hate yourself for that. So I hope this was a good talk. Everybody, I hope you have a great day and thank you for listening. Cutting Edge Radio Network now has three major stations that you can enjoy. Good Talk Radio bring you 24-7 of high-quality talk shows. Good Music Radio bring you 24-7 of classic rock and top hits. And Good Old Radio 24-7 vintage radio shows, podcast form, and 24-7 radio. So come join us at Cutting Edge Radio Network for a full flavor of radio entertainment. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.